Hey boys and girls, are you ready for Saturday morning cartoon propaganda? Pour yourself your favorite bowl of cereal because today we are going to learn how to remain separate from the world. Yes, this is the latest installment of the series Become Jehovah's Friend and it was shown to the attendees of the 2023 annual meeting. So you know what we're doing today, we're gonna do the Become Jehovah's Friend challenge. So once this cartoon convinces you to become Jehovah's Friend, let me know the exact moment that convinced you. And if by the end of the video you're not convinced to become Jehovah's Friend, then um, prepare to be executed. Good morning, students. This is your principal, Rodriguez, and I'm very happy to announce that soon we're going to have our annual holiday party. Isn't that exciting? So get ready for games, treats, and more. It's gonna be great. Yay! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. It's awesome watching kids getting excited over a silly holiday party. Oh boy, I sure hope that religious indoctrination doesn't ruin the experience for any of them. Okay, everybody, settle down. We'll see you all tomorrow. See you there, Sophia. Oh, wait, you can't go. <laughs> well, that's all for today. Oh, okay. That's right, thank you. Before I go, We'd like to announce the award for the student of the month, which goes to... Caleb, way to go! Wow, look at Caleb. That's my little brother. With Jehovah's help, he tries to be good in school. I like learning about Jehovah. Why don't you just let my boy Caleb enjoy his moment without feeling the need to mention the Sky Father? Oh wait, I forgot Caleb actually has direct communication with the spirit realm. <laughs> Are you ready to study? Oh, I'll get my book. I'll meet you outside. Okay. Hey, Zoe. Oh, hey. What you doing? Um, I'm just about to meet Sophia. Why do you hang out with her? She's so different, weird. <laughs> she never does anything fun. I mean, you're different, Zoe, but in a cool way. You should hang out with us, not that loser. Angela. Please see me immediately. See you later, Zoe. What are the loonies at the art department smoking? I just imagine they got together to design these three antagonist girls, worldly girls, and they were like, hmm, I wonder how do worldly people act? So one of them has to be a nerdy ginger, one of them has to be a goth girl that's always eating lollipops, and the other one has to be an Among Us character. <laughs> Why are you intimidated by this midget, Zoe? She's like 2 feet 3, just kick her out of the way. They just went for the most stereotypical, bland designs possible. I mean, just like the bully character, remember from a few episodes ago? The fat bully character, because we've never seen fat bullies in media before. <laughs> Uh, I need to have a talk with the art department. Does it bother you that others think you're different? What do you mean? Some of the other kids say things. Like, it's weird you can't celebrate holidays. And that you can't have fun. What? Who says we can't have fun? <laughs> of course. 
course we can have fun. If by fun, you mean playing football by yourself or studying an indoctrination manual during your lunch break, then yeah, Sophia, how fun. Totally not weird. It can be hard sometimes, but it's good to be different. Like Jesus. Like Jesus? Yeah, that's right. We learn a lot about him at family worship. In the Bible. Remember when Caleb's dad actually went to the gym and he was super jacked? Now, what did they do to him? Look at the mask of my boy. And remember how the mom used to be darker? Why did they demelanize her? What's going on? Jesus said his followers would be no part of the world. What do you think it means to be no part of the world? So why is Caleb allowed to draw spaceships during family worship? I was never given that luxury. How are you going to be properly indoctrinated, Caleb, if you're not following along with the study? Boy, if you're not indoctrinated, you might go on to do something with your life, like become an actual astronaut, and we don't want that, do we? I also can't help but feel bad for all the 3D artists working on these projects in Bethel, but you know, instead of actually profiting from their obvious talents, they're just doing it for free, for a cult. Best life ever. <laughs> That's a good guess. But we don't have to leave the planet. He said that he did not want to take his followers out of the world, but... That they should be no part of the world. That's right, honey. What else did Jesus say? They are no part of the world, just as I am no part of the world. How was Jesus no part of the world? Let's see. Jesus was different from everyone else, and so were his friends. He showed others how to be different in what they did, what they said, and even how they thought. Really? How? People aren't always nice to others they think are different. The audacity of this woman. People are not nice to others who are different from them? Yeah, just like you're not nice to people who leave your religion? But Jesus wanted to help everyone, and that made some people very angry. They wanted Jesus to be more like them. But he didn't worry about what they thought, because who did Jesus want to be like? Jehovah! That's right. Jehovah said that those who obeyed his voice were special to him. So, when you love and obey Jehovah, and you are no part of the world like Jesus, that makes you special to him. I don't know if I could ever be like you. What do you mean? Okay, okay, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I... I gotta go. So he then drops her study, goes on with her life, and becomes a successful entrepreneur. Nah, just kidding. This is a watchtower propaganda. Of course she doesn't. doing when you love and obey Jehovah that makes you special to him
Damn, she's tripping on acid now. Hey, it's a leopard. Damn, that run cycle was terrible. Oh yeah, this is totally how kids run. It's definitely not nightmare fuel. Get away. We don't want you here. Hey, this is how elders treat disfellowship people and gays. I mean, even the dog has the common sense to not approach someone with leprosy. I mean, guys, we have to remember that back in the first century, leprosy was an incurable disease that could disfigure your hand and make your skin fall off. Of course, avoiding lepers made sense. Lord, if you just want to, you can make me clean. I want to be made clean. It's a isn't one of us. Jesus was different in what he did, said, and thought. Of course, he was the son of God. He could go around touching lepers and spitting on people's eyes without the fear of catching a cold. The common people did not have these superpowers, so I just don't understand how this particular story relates to the topic of remaining separate from the world. If Jesus actually kept separate from the world, he would have just told that leper to fuck off. He would have never dined with prostitutes and sinners. The Jesus of the Gospels didn't remain separate from the world. He was deeply immersed in it. That's why he pissed off so many of the Pharisees. Did you not read your Bible? I'm sorry about your grandma. This is for you. It will help you feel better. Thank you. And that made some people very angry. Ah! Oops, I didn't see you there. Are you okay? Let me help. Sometimes they pick on me too. People aren't always nice to others that they think are different. You should hang out with us, not that loser. But Jesus wanted to be like his father, Jehovah. And that's what made him special. Hey, darling. How was your study with Sophia? Mom! There's something I want to show you. Oh, okay. Whoa, 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 I call BS. Why would Zoe's mother ever allow her daughter to study this book? Any responsible parent would at least read over the book and find out that the later chapters talk about refusing blood transfusions, obeying the governing body, and being willing to die for this religion. This book is not for kids. It would have been much more appropriate for Sophia to study the great teacher book. I mean, she already gave it to Zoe. This book exists in this cinematic universe. Why are you not studying that? I think that's a little bit more wholesome, no? Well, to me, it seems that Watchtower is really pushing children to preach to their schoolmates. But hey, good luck bringing any converts this way because Zoe is just a Google search away from ending her study. And I mean, we just have to talk about the Jesus bit again. 
Why did they choose this story? The moral of the leper story is that Jesus was kind to the outcast of society. It's not a story on remaining separate from the world. Watchtower could have chosen any other story in the Old Testament to promote that teaching, like the story of Daniel and his friends, you know, when they refused to eat pork in Babylon? Wouldn't that fit the theme much better? I mean, this just shows you that the goofballs of Bethel don't even know their own Bible, or if they do know it, they're just willingly manipulating these verses or these stories to fit their propaganda. Like I said, the whole Jesus character goes against the notion of staying separate from the world. I mean, did this man not tell his followers to be a light to the nations? How are you going to be a light to the nations if you isolate yourself during your lunch break and avoid making friends with people outside of your religion? Hmm. We have had like a dozen cartoons at this point, and we've never seen Caleb or Sophia make a single friend at school. All of their classmates fall under two categories. They either serve as peer pressure to be resisted, or they serve as potential recruits. The only reason Sophia is talking to Zoe is because she is trying to bring her into her religion. I mean, just notice the difference in kindness shown by the two girls. When Sophia is assaulted by the emo girl, Zoe comes help her out of compassion. No ulterior motives, no trying to convert her. But when Zoe's family member dies, Sophia comes to comfort her, only to push a watchtower book on her. The moment Zoe stops studying, Sophia is gonna feel pressure to drop her as a friend. JW kids are constantly pressured to preach to their classmates, I mean, it's seen as their personal ministry territory. Because instead of just fostering wholesome friendships with other kids, now all they do is look for opportunities to convert their peers. How is this healthy development in any way? I hate this cartoon so much. Alright everyone, enjoy the holiday party! Hey Zoe, aren't you coming? Let me show you how it's done. Hi guys, you didn't go to the party? No, I want to do the right thing. Okay, let's have some fun. Oh, not again. <laughs> what the hell are you looking at, Zoe? Did the spirit realm also open up to you as well? Bah. I guess the god of the universe just loves seeing kids isolate themselves in the library during the holidays. Turns out Jehovah is just a cosmic version of the Grinch. So guys, let me know what you thought of this cartoon in the comments below. I absolutely hated it. Oh my god, what a massive piece of crap. It's just so insidious. It's using dramatic music and silly animations to hide such a harmful message. I mean, guys, I'm not a child psychologist, but even an idiot like me can acknowledge that isolation is not good for children. I mean, sure, children need to learn how to avoid negative peer pressure, but this takes that principle way overboard. It's definitely one of the worst Caleb and Sophia cartoons, and believe me, we've seen some awful ones so far. This channel is made possible with contributions by viewers like you, so thank you. If you would like to support my work, please head on over to Patreon or become a channel member. It's only $1 a month, and you gain early access to all my videos. Thank you so much for everyone who has made this channel possible. Take it easy guys, have a wonderful day, and stay away from the tower.